remember, um, they could have all these tokens locked in this treasury, and if there's a hacker vulnerability of the wallet, or they just go rogue and decide they're going to do the rug pull and, and take all the, the funds out of the treasury, they can probably do that if this isn't taken care of. Hi, welcome to the Interaxis channel and Interaxis.io. We're going to talk today about DAO treasuries. This is going to be such an important topic in the next several years. The, the management, the analysis of what, is, what, what a DAO is holding in terms of cryptocurrencies, in terms of uh, digital assets, in terms of other assets. We need to be, be able to look inside and be able to help those DAO members actually manage the treasuries. First, please, if you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Interaxis8. Okay, now we're going to talk a little bit more about DAO treasuries and what they, they actually are. So within a DAO, so remember a DAO is a decentralized autonomous organization, uh, but in its current iteration, more of just a decentralized organization. It's a group of, of people, uh, of token holders that are helping to manage some sort of uh, entity or some sort of group. All right, and those have th those can go all the way from kind of an investment club or a club that uh, a group of people that gets together to invest in something like NFTs, like we've seen with Flamingo DAO or like we've seen with Whale DAO, or it could be Maker, it could be Compound, it could be Nexus Mutual, because some of these big protocols that we see with, that are actually managed by a DAO or managed by a group of token holders that, that decide the, the future of the organization, the future of the protocol, the future of what they're going to do. So we're going to see more and more DAOs be created. We're going to see more and more groups get together around a, a common theme or a common investment or a common interest or a common protocol, something like that where they are going to have to manage not only the protocol, not only the investment, but what is in the treasury. So what do we mean by the treasury? The treasury can be uh, if they've decided to raise money from the beginning. So if you uh, want to join a DAO, for instance, and you have to pay one ETH to be a member, and that gets you one you know, DAO token, or 100 DAO tokens or something, this one ETH goes into the corporate treasury. Okay, so now the, the DAO, it's not the corporate treasury, the DAO treasury is managing, has this one ETH in there and has to decide what to do with it. And of course, there's a voting structure. There's a structure that says, we're gonna have conversations. Those are gonna bubble up into proposals. And if those proposals get approved, then we will spend some of the treasury. And of course, it gets managed. This is something else we have to talk about. It gets managed potentially by a multi-sig uh, wallet, hopefully. Now they will also get tokens for whatever the DAO, the project is. And the, the, this is another part of the treasury is this DAO might mint, you know, 10 million tokens to, to sit there and they might only give out 100,000 or a million to start with. So now they have the rest of their tokens sitting in the treasury that they need to be able to manage. So why is all this important? This is important for so many reasons. When we look at corporations, at public corporations and look at investing, we get to look inside uh, because they're public, we get to see what they're holding in their treasury. Are they holding cash? Are they holding stock in other companies? Uh, are they holding bonds? We get to see what their exposure is. We get to measure and we say, if, if X happens, if the market goes down, if, uh, if there's a supply chain issue, if some of their companies that they're invested in go down in value, what happens to this company? That's what we get to look at. Also, if they're holding, if, if say Apple Corporation, if, if Apple is holding, um, obviously a bunch of cash, but if they're also holding a bunch of stock in other companies, we get to think about what would happen and, and, and uh, run through models of what would happen to Apple stock should the value of those companies that it's holding go up or down, because Apple is holding those. Those are assets on the books. So this sitting in the, in the treasury of a DAO, these are assets they essentially have on their books. And by virtue of the fact that most DAO tokens uh, eventually get traded either on a, a usually on a DEX like Uniswap, eventually they might make it to a centralized exchange like Coinbase and Gemini and Kraken, that we want to make sure that we understand what is underlying, what is inside this DAO, because not only are we looking at what their potential is for, for growth, for the, the utilization of, of what may be as a governance token, but we also need to look inside the treasury. We need to look inside and see what, what assets they're holding for many purposes. One is for investment purposes. 
So I need to know, if I'm an investor, what they're holding inside their treasury. So if this particular DAO, whether it's Compound or Maker or Nexus Mutual, if they are holding uh, almost all ETH within their treasury, ETH and their own token, then I know that, that, then I need to know, okay, if my portfolio, my crypto portfolio is already, say, 25% ETH, and I'm holding, you know, 10% of whatever this this token is, we'll call it Compound, although I'm not quite sure how much ETH they hold. And Compound is itself, you know, 50% ETH, right? Then I've added another 5% of ETH to my portfolio and my exposure, and maybe I didn't want that, but I want this token, so I gotta reduce my ETH by 5%, my, my direct, my spot ETH by 5%. This is going to be really important. This is something we do in traditional investing all the time. We look across portfolios and, and oftentimes people are invested in ETFs or mutual funds and they don't realize that when we look inside of those funds, we see that a lot of times they, they are not as diversified as they think. So you might think diversifying among different DeFi tokens or different DAO tokens is diversifying you, when in reality, if they all have some sort of uh, exposure to ETH by virtue of the fact that they have them in their treasury, that's really important to note. Okay, very important to note on the downside and on the upside. You might say, okay, I'm, I'm really bullish ETH and therefore I can be bullish ETH by having some and I can be bullish ETH by having some compound where I want this particular protocol to go up in value, but I know that if ETH goes up in value, at least compound, at least 50% of it should go up. And I also know that let's say ETH you know, stays relatively flat and compound goes down significantly, I know that this might be undervalued because maybe it's, it's gone down by so much that even the value of ETH sitting in their treasury should actually bring it back up. So those are some interesting points to note because many DeFi investors have not necessarily been traditional investors. And so that's a, an interesting um, point to think about when it comes to investing and thinking about the treasuries of, of some of these DAOs. Something else to think about when it comes to the treasury of the DAO is they might be very heavily weighted towards their own token, of course. And it, it so happens that, you know, maybe in the, um, in, in the recent past, their token has gone up tremendously in value. Maybe they've listed it on a DEX, maybe they've gotten listed on a centralized exchange, and they have a tremendous number of their own tokens. But that, that means that they are that remember they have to you know maybe pay their bills or something so if you have you know if if 80 percent of your treasury is your own dow token then and and the value of your dow token goes down significantly because we have a downturn in the in the crypto and the DeFi markets and you still have to pay bills right just like any company has to pay bills you have to be able to manage your treasury now Admittedly, many people that are managing DAOs, and this is no slight to them, but many people that are managing, you know, helping to, to govern DAOs that have those tokens that are, that are very um, uh, prominent on some of those, in some of those DAO groups uh, have not had the, the long history of managing corporate treasuries, right? So right now, it's great to see the, the value of your token go up and therefore the value of your treasury, the value of, of the DAO overall go up. But when it goes down, it might go down significantly. And so we need to, we need to be watching how those DAOs are able to manage their treasury because others might be investing in this token. And we want to watch and see how they're, they're managing the treasury that might be 80%, 70% uh, this particular token because they might, not, they might not have raised a bunch of money. It might just be that they have a community and, and launched it. So uh, interestingly, there's, there are actually some services, products, tokens, uh, protocols that have come out that are actually helping DAOs to manage. So uh, UMA came out recently with their range token, which is a, an interesting concept that we'll talk about uh, probably in another video, but the idea of this was to help the DAO treasurers or, or the, the managers of the DAO treasury be able to manage the risk here, create a range token that says they don't have to necessarily sell a bunch of these DAO tokens to be able to pay their bills, especially if the value is really low or, or they think the value is going to go up. If they say, look, we're just a week away or a month away from you know, launching our V2 of our protocol or something, we need this time because we think the value of our token is going to go up. They can use Yuma and issue these range tokens that essentially allow the DAO to get some sort of liquidity 
uh, without having to sell these tokens the same way that a company like Apple might leverage their own stock to be able to get some liquidity, get some cash if they need it in order to, to pay bills or, or pay down debt or do whatever they have to do, pay people for their work, but not necessarily have to sell their stock when it's down or, or, or not necessarily have to sell it when it's on the way up. So Uma has come out with this range token that we will go into more detail uh, in another video, but it's really interesting to see those that kind of have a history of dealing with treasuries, of, of dealing with corporate money coming into the, the space of DAOs and coming into the space of DeFi and saying, we're going to help with some of these products and services that we know that you probably need. So the range token is one of those that's going to offload some of that risk. And you're going to have range token holders that are going to, able to, to be able to help, help with these DAOs and participate in the potential upside of, the, uh, of that DAO and of that DAO token while allowing the, the DAO and, the, and those that are managing the treasury be able to um, be, be able to effectively manage their treasury without having to worry about the risk of their token, you know, fluctuating too much in value. They can just go do what they need to do. Okay, it's really interesting to see that, and and it's really important to talk about and to understand what's happening uh, behind the scenes. Remember, this is extremely, extremely transparent. So you should be able to look in and see what's in all these treasuries, and use that in evaluating your investments, and use that in your risk profiling, use that in your allocation. And we're not quite there yet, as most people are not doing this. There are some that are really looking into some of these analytics and understanding what's in these treasuries and, and determining which ones are under or over value, not necessarily just based on what we see happening in the market and those trends, but under or overvalued based on just what they're holding within their treasury. One other important point to note is from a security standpoint, you want to you, if, if you're investing in one of these or you're part of one of these, you probably want to look at security of the wallet or wallets that are holding the, the treasury. And so here's where you want to make sure you, there's some sort of uh, multi-sig uh, wallet, which most of these do, but some sort of multi-sig wallet there. You want to figure out who the signers are uh, and make sure that that whole group is is relatively trustworthy, as trustworthy, I guess, as, as you can get. Because remember, um, they could have all these tokens locked in this treasury, and if there's a hacker vulnerability of the wallet, or they just go rogue and decide they're going to do the rug pull and, and take all the, the funds out of the treasury, they can probably do that if this isn't taken care of. So the, some of the things we're going to look at when, with regard to investing in a token that represents a DAO, which so many are right now, the protocols and such, so many actually represent DAOs, one, some of the things we need to look at are how are they, what is in the treasury, what is it made up of, and what as an investor does that give me access to, or what am, what am I, what is my risk, what, how am I allocated now, what is my exposure. Number two, I want to look at how are they managing that treasury, what are they doing with it, are, are they seeing it as, okay, we launched this token at, you know, under a penny and now it's worth ten dollars and we have you know, several hundred millions of dollars and we're just going to have a, a party? Or are they looking at it as, okay, now we have this wealth, we have to figure out how to effectively manage this as if it's a corporate treasury. This is money that we now have that we can spend, we need to figure out what we're going to do with it. And three, what is their security like? How sure am I that when I invest in this particular token that this group, this, these DAO managers are able to actually effectively keep my funds secure, keep the, the uh, DAO treasury secure. So those are some important points to look at and look at some of the products and services that are being built on top of other protocols to help DAOs actually manage their treasury. This is going to be really important in the coming years as we see more and more groups that are created, whether they're investment clubs, protocols, uh, applications, wh whatever they might be, that are going to be organized as a DAO, since we can now have legal, have LLC DAOs in, in the U.S., they're going to be organized as that. They're going to issue tokens. Uh, they're going, they're, they obviously can almost immediately get some sort of investment. You're going to have tokens that almost immediately have some sort of value, even if it's as, as a governance token. 
And as an investor, it's going to be really easy to get into them. But as an investor, you're also going to want, going to, want to have to look into some of these topics. As a DAO member, basically as someone who owns the token and is voting, you want to look at some of these and say, maybe how can I help? How can I look inside this? What do I need to do based on my experience and understanding to help uh, you know, manage the treasury, understand the treasury? So I want to talk a little bit about DAO treasuries, uh, especially with the announcement a couple weeks ago that UMA was, have, was launching this range token to help out. I want to talk a little bit uh, more about Dow Treasuries. Hope uh, this was helpful and informative. Uh, hope you'll subscribe. Hope you'll visit us uh, on Twitter at Interaxis8. And we'll see you in the next video.